It's definitely Mother Nature and only God knows what is going to happen with our lake levels. We don't really know why the water's rising. I think we have to recognize that this change is uh, eventual. It's really devastating to watch along the lake shore. I'm Wendy Holsteg. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams in Holland and I live in Holland. I'm fortunate enough to live on Lake Mac. So my name is Valerie Van Hees. I am the president of the uh, Michigan Shipwreck Research Association. We search for shipwrecks, we dive, we document shipwrecks, and we interpret shipwrecks for the public. Hi, I'm Ryan Lebster. I live here in Holland, Michigan, on the shorelines of Lake Michigan. Part of the great thing about living in Holland is living next to Lake Michigan. And we've always been um, a family who really loves being out on the lake and the water. Um, and so that was one of my dreams was to live on the water. Uh, well, we moved here in November of 2018. And when we first moved here, we would be able to walk around the trees that you can see that are in the water now. So um, it was immediate the water just started coming up. We moved here in 2011, and at that point in time, the water line was much further out. In fact, we measured it that where these stairs are right here, 250 feet further out is where the water line used to be. Without knowing what the winter's gonna bring, if we don't get the freeze to create that buffer, then the wind and the waves are just going to beat on the shoreline all winter like they did last year, and that was devastating. Um, you know, the water levels in Lake Michigan change frequently. The high water levels, interestingly, have recently uncovered a lot of shore wrecks that were buried in the sand, and because of the movement of the water higher up on the beach, shipwrecks have become uh, uncovered, giving us a great opportunity to have a window into the past. Well, we definitely adapted because when we moved in, we had tiered landscaping and the first tier was suddenly falling into the lake. So we had to tear it out and put in a seawall. Our neighbors next door put in a seawall just a month or so ago. Um, so you're seeing a lot of that along Lake Michigan with people either putting the sand filled bags or rocks or steel seawalls because they're trying to protect what's left of their bluff and their property. It's really devastating to watch along the lake shore. Uh, we've never had any second thoughts about moving out here to the water, but it did require us to put in some erosion control measures that you can see. We're standing on what's called a geotube. It's a very innovative um, approach to erosion control. So you see all the, all the tubes here are all filled with sand. We trucked in the sand so we didn't pump it out of the lake or anything. And then we filled these tubes. And then the bottom here is engineered so that when the water comes up and rushes up, it doesn't reverberate and erode the soil or the sand below. So eventually, all these tubes and sandbags will be covered in sand and we can grow dune grass on it. So it's very environmentally friendly. Other options are lots of rocks. They call it riprap. And that's probably uh, well over $100, $125, $150 per foot. And then a lot of people are doing seawalls. And those are close to $200 per foot. And even up the way, you can see some seawalls that people put in. And when the waves hit those seawalls, 
they bounce back and they scour out all the sand in front of it, making it deeper and more of an erosion problem. You know, my suggestion is protect your property because it, it, I mean, to see the decks and the sheds and the homes that are just hanging off the cliffs of Lake Michigan, do what you can to protect it. Um, it's a big investment, but your home is also your biggest investment and you want to protect it and take care of it in any way that you can. I think things that homeowners can do is to build farther back from the water. Um, that's certainly preventative. Um, I think a lot of homeowners, I've been involved in a particular home along Lake Michigan that's had to um, come up with unique ways of protecting that land. Um, I think we have to recognize that this change is uh, eventual and we have to prepare for it by um, building for our future. The, the homes on, on Lake Michigan, people are very hesitant to buy unless they are set far away from the bluff. The average sale price has definitely been impacted going down. Um, longer days on market for people who are trying to sell their home just because of the unknowns of when are the levels going to level out and when are they going to go back down. Since the beginning of 2020, there have been nine sales on Lake Michigan under a million, which is really unheard of. So you can get a good deal right now for some properties that are set close to the bluff, but it's a big investment and a big risk to take. Particularly this year when the water's been so high, it's really affected the um, boat launching ramps. And we are mobile, we go from um, place to place, so we're dependent on launch ramps. This year, quite a few of them were closed. Um, a, a number of them made it rather difficult to launch. Uh, you had to put your boat in the water farther, which means your exhaust pipe from your car could be underwater. So there were really a lot of challenges this year. For a lot of people who boat in this area because they haven't been able to use the DNR boat launch because the water's so high over there that they had to pull the docks because it became unsafe. So you're seeing a lot more congestion at Dutton Park and Collins Park across the lake where they have the public boat launches. The water levels are so high so they changed the no wake zones in the lake this year to try and minimize the impact of those homes. Um, water's been going in basements. There's a home um, at the end of our, our road over on Barkentine where they had to tear down the house because they couldn't stop the water from coming in. Many of the shipwrecks we visit are deep um, and we need to blend special gases to be able to do that safely. But now with the lake water levels deeper, uh, we have to blend different gases. We have to be prepared that ships we've been on before that were reasonable depth are now just a little too deep for our blend of gases. So yes, we've had to adjust our equipment. Well, I'm a kiteboarder, and so when you do kiteboarding, you have, you have to set your kite up and run your lines out. And if you've seen it ever at State Park, it's kind of a big, long thing. We used to be able to set it up right here and launch and go and kiteboard right from here, but we don't have enough beach to do that. So we had to go to State Park and do it, so that's one thing. Um, each year as the erosion kept coming, we kept having to go up on top of the dune. Well, that's where we're standing now, that's gone. So we didn't really have any beach to sit on or enjoy. Um, we used to set up tents out there and sleep overnight on the beach, but that's underwater now too. Well, we've had to change our water frontage because we used to have a beach and we no longer have a beach so we put in the seawall um, you know we always imagined fires on the beach but that's gone so now it's up on the landscaping area. Recently the high water levels caused erosion uh, along the Lake Michigan frontage just north of the Holland Channel and it exposed a concrete column that uh, when I was called in to investigate, I recognized as a column from the original Lakewood Farm and Zoo. Um, the homeowner in front of that property was going to um, uh, sandbag the area to protect it, but we were able to save that column. We were able to move it to the Pump House Museum, and now it's on display. So that's one local case of where high water levels has been really good for historic preservation but it, it changes on a daily basis, even hourly. Sometimes our neighbor's dock will be underwater. A couple hours later, you can see it again. So it's just crazy how the 
the waves and the wind impact the levels. I don't know if they can control it, and I wouldn't want to see us pumping our water elsewhere, like to the southwest. So I think it's a cyclical thing, and it just it rises, and hopefully it goes back down. So I expect that there will continue to be fluctuations. We can only hope that they will be minor and not major. Seriously, it's, it's a cycle, and people have told us that seawalls that have been covered up for 20, 30, 40 years are now showing um, along Lake Michigan. So it is a cycle and it's gonna come back, but it, we just don't know how soon um, and what it'll look like when it does. But it's definitely mother nature and only God knows what is gonna happen with our lake levels.